hopefully everyone got a chance to try their hand at coding out the optimal solution. If you didn't, that's perfectly fine. This is how I would do it. So if you'll notice right here in the middle, I have written this little object here that reminds us of what the key and the values will be. The key is going to be the number to find that we're looking for, for any respective number that we are currently on. And the actual value is going to be the index of the opposing pair that gets generated. So let's run through this. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a new hash map. And I'm going to call it the nums map. This nums map is going to be that exact object we just spoke about. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to write the for loop that is the combination of the two for loops we had before. So here I'm going to have a for loop with just one pointer now. This pointer is going to be the exact same and check as long as it's less than the nums length. We're going to increment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do that first step. That first task we have to do is we have to check if the current number that P is at is equal to any number that we are looking for in our nums map so far. So I'm just going to set the value that we get back from the nums map into its own const because we might use it more than once. So here I'm just going to call it current map val is equal to nums map at nums at p. Now that we have our current map val, this value could either be an index value that we've got so far, which means that we have a correct answer, or it could be undefined. So that's what we have to account for in our if conditional check now. So we're going to say if current map val is greater than or equal to zero. Now you might be wondering why are we doing that? Well, in JavaScript, zero is considered a falsy value, which means that if we actually generated the correct number to find that we found later in the array from zero, when p was zero, this zero index would get returned here, and this would actually evaluate to false, because zero in JavaScript is falsy. So we just have to write it like this. So if you do plan to do your interview in JavaScript, keep in mind all of the rules of JavaScript when writing your optimal solution. So once we see that the current map val is greater than or equal to zero, then what we want to return is an array of the two indices. Now here, one of those values is going to be our current map val. Because remember, that is the index value. The next thing we're going to return is p, because that is the opposing index of the matching pair. If that doesn't happen, then in our else statement, we are going to do the second task, which is to generate the number to find and then store it in our nums map. So here I'm going to say const number to find is equal to the target minus nums at p. So here it's the exact same formula we had last time. Once I have this, I need to make sure to store this in the nums map. So I'm going to say nums map at this number to find, which is the key, is equal to a value of p, which is the index that created this number to find. Then I am going to close this else block. And I'm also going to close this for loop, because now there's nothing left in the for loop to do. The last thing here is to return our null case. So this is just as simple as we had before. If our for loop executes and nothing happens, and we haven't found a solution, then we return null. So with that, we have our working solution. Now, the best thing to do is the same thing we did before, which is run through our test case. But before we do that, let's just quickly evaluate what the new space and time complexity is. So here, our time complexity is only this one for loop. This for loop is the only thing that scales with an increasing input of our nums array. 
Of course, as nums grows, so does the amount of loops we do, but it's only one loop. So we can say that we have a time complexity now of O of N. Space complexity, on the other hand, has grown from what we had before, because here we notice that our nums map actually grows every time nums increases. Because as the nums increases, the chances that we store more values in our nums map also increases, because there's a case, even with our current array, where the answer is the last two values, which means that we have generated a number to find and stored it in our nums map for every single value that came before this solution. So in a worst case scenario, we also have a space complexity of O of N. So that's what we're gonna write. Space is O of N. But that's a perfectly good trade-off to make because we brought time down so much. Now let's once again take our test cases and run them through our newly optimized solution. That's what we're going to do in the next lesson.